Hey guys, welcome back. Robocraft Early Access Coverage. This is episode 108, I'm an Igneous, and today we're reworking Pretty Hate Machine. That's right, brand new Pretty Hate Machine to reflect some of the changes with the new MOBA battle mode. I, I really wanted to get something that was a little bit faster. I wanted to have uh, ultimately a light hover that had six plasma cannons and and would be fast so we could zip around when we're overclocked and do all kinds of crazy things drifting around corners uh like a, a overworked tiny little import sedan <laughs> what can i say uh it wasn't meant to be for the speed part but it did give us an opportunity to kind of uh rethink and rework the overall design for the chassis in a way that hopefully will provide us with a slightly smaller profile and, uh, you know, the same kind of redundancy, the same kind of benefits as the, the previous Pretty Hate Machine without that great, big, huge, bulky nose that was uh, really, really easy to shoot at and even easier to destroy. So that's what we're doing. Starting with the basic spine, um, this is the, the same model for the spine that I've used for countless bots. I thought about doing the wider spine like we had been doing with previous designs, but ultimately... I just kind of decided that it wasn't going to be necessary and it was all part of that whole thing of you know making a, a bit of an effort to keep it as light as possible obviously we've got some thrusters on here because we were hoping to improve the speed with thrusters but at the same time not wanting to put the thrusters in a position where they were going to cause problems with maneuverability uh, we've had that problem in the past where we put the thrusters on and then we find out that um, they, they're really slow turning or um, you know, they're really, really hard to control with the turning. So putting them on early in a position where they were close to the hover blades, um, close to the center of mass of the bot, uh, both, you know, up and down and side to side. And then it became, uh, kind of an idea to have all of the hover blades right next to one another, instead of having them, uh, with a one or two block gap so that we could armor in between. This was kind of like, eh. We're, realistically speaking, the, the armoring in between probably offered some benefit at some point, but not enough to necessarily justify it as the only way to approach the shrouding of the hover blades. You'll also notice that I'm building with uh, exclusively prisms still. Now, before someone comments, yes, I am entirely aware that prisms now have 95% of the armor value of cubes. Actually, is it is it prisms have 95% or, or maybe they're 90 2.5 or something and it's inners that are 95% all I, I know they're less I don't care it's not that much of a difference that it's gonna change the way that I build I like doing things all with prisms because I'm used to it I've been doing it for so long now um, you know some people have a hard time adjusting to this kind of build method to the extent that they just give up on it entirely they go back to building exclusively out of cubes on the other side of that spectrum is people who have been building with exclusively prisms for so long that the idea of using cubes again is just this foreign sort of alien concept and for the single digit percentage worth of increased armor to be had from replacing some of these prisms with cubes and it's i'm not that concerned it's not it's not really that much of a consideration because remember we're not getting it's not like we're going from the all prism build to an all cube build where we would get the full benefit of the transition. We'd only be switching some of these prisms for cubes and the rest would be staying prisms. So it's not, it's, it's not even the full uh, improvement that you would get if, of, you know, swapping a prism for a cube one for one. Now, with the hover blades and the thrusters in place, this is kind of the opportunity to go around and sort of tuck the extra prisms in where we can fit them and then eventually sort of take a look at things from the point of view of where can we put some uh, tetras to build things out even further the idea being the more blocks that you have the more damage you're able to soak before it starts hitting components very simple and straightforward uh still seeing posts on forums from people discussing triforce and based on what they're saying demonstrating that the understanding of the triforce concept that they're using is quite a departure from how things actually work and we all know on the internet uh trying to tell someone uh look chum you've got it all wrong it's actually this sometimes is is not a very pleasant conversation other times you can kind of put across the idea that you know that's old information and it's been 
uh, updated since and now this is how it works and they say oh okay thanks for letting me know but most of the time it's just a fight uh, especially when it comes to people posting on videos saying ah ha ha this is all stupid because it doesn't work that way and you're like ah ha ha yes it does yes it does and everyone who's actually tried it has found out for themselves that it works much better but really we're, we're not trying to start a revolution we're just doing the thing that we do and the people, like I say, who have tried it, who have actually given it a fair shake and made a reasonable effort to implement it in their builds, have never come back to say, you know what, not worth it, didn't notice any difference at all, it was actually worse, something, something. If you're doing it right, you're seeing an, an improvement in the performance of your bot, and if you're not doing it right, then maybe it's not going to work so well for you, but that's kind of the same with anything in life. If you're not doing it right, it may not work so well for you. Now you can see already the the side profile of this bot like if you're looking at it from the side or from the front or from the back is already a much more slim incarnation of the pretty hate machine than what we had in the previous build one of the reasons why the the previous pretty hate machine looks so big and bulky in the front for those of you who maybe didn't watch the entire build or have only seen match footage with it and wondering what the hell was going on is because we had a pair of t tier 10 thrusters uh towards the front of the bot and just below the middle of the you know center of mass when you're thinking top to bottom and then we built all the way around it with prisms to protect the thrusters and that's how we ended up with that great big huge uh front frame which realistically speaking wasn't really worth it i think overall when we start looking at what it actually protected in the long run because when you're losing the thruster in a design like that it's not because everybody shot all of the armor all the way around the thruster and then the thruster itself is they would shoot through a layer of armor at a particular location and then the thruster and then there would be this great big hollow opening in the you know the 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 front part of the craft where once a thruster resided and now is only the prisms that surrounded it so uh, it, it, it was, I think, a reasonable idea to kind of approach it that way, but in practice, turns out that it really wasn't wasn't worth all of the hassle that went along with it. So in this case, we're not worried necessarily about building all the way around the thrusters because we know that it's not necessarily going to pay off. But we are interested in building all the way around the hover blades because we, we can't afford to lose our mobility. We can't afford to be dragging ourselves across the ground trying to maintain some semblance of maneuverability because we know that that doesn't work so well either. So we're just kind of trying to hedge our bets a little bit and focus our attention on the areas where we can actually do some good, create some benefit in the design, and not necessarily get caught up in things that seem like a really good idea on paper but don't actually translate to a meaningful benefit in reality, such as armoring thrusters. <laughs> all the way around now this is going to be one of the first builds uh that we've done one of the first builds not the first one but one of the first builds where we were able to build the chassis all the way around it and then decide after the fact that we had plenty of cpu left over to start looking at some electroplates which is like i say it's not something that we've been able to do on a regular basis some people get a little bit upset when they see my builds and they don't see electroplates on them there's a reason why we haven't focused on adding electroplates to our builds, and that's because we haven't really needed to, for one, and because we haven't had the CPU, for another. It wasn't going to be one of those cases where I was going to strip down the actual working armor for electroplates that may or may not provide a situational benefit just for the sake of saying we had electroplates. I was really happy with the performance we were getting out of the prism armor, the armor core method, and, you know, cutting that short for the sake of putting electroplates on to keep people happy not again it's one of those things people not necessarily understanding exactly what we're doing and the benefits we're getting out of it looking at what everyone else is doing and saying these guys have got it right because that's what everyone does we don't do what everyone does and that's why we don't get the same results that everyone gets and that's basically the beginning and the end of the whole discussion there but as we've gone up in level and our cpu maximum has increased we get to that point where everything is on the bot that we wanted to have on the bot and we've still got plenty of cpu left over and that's where we start looking at electroplates and saying yeah maybe we could uh, squeeze a few on here and there we'll just see what we can do i'm still not really big on the idea at this point of spending more rp on components that don't have a future on a megabot if that makes any sense like 
uh, tier 9 or tier 10 electroplates. I did spend a little bit on some tier 10 electroplates specifically for this build and it's one of those things where once you've bought it you have it forever and hopefully tier 10 will last for long enough in this game uh, that it's you know it's going to be an investment as opposed to a one-time expense that doesn't really have a long-term future but uh, there's going to be some CPU that's left unused on this bot for at least a little while while we kind of consider our options to decide what we would like to do in terms of spending more RP on electroplates or just saving it and piling it all towards a megabot. Now you can see here, this is what I'm talking about, basically about, you know, finishing off the chassis and realizing we have everything that we want on it and still having plenty of CPU. I'm really happy with the way that this looks, but most importantly, I'm really happy with the profile in terms of something that you can hit from a distance. It's not going to be a hard bot to hit, but it's not going to be this big bulky thing like we had before where, you know, the, the front end of the bot was twice as thick as what we're seeing now. It's got a smaller um, side profile, side including the front and the back. We haven't got the guns on it yet, but that's, I mean, we've got plenty of room to place the guns. And it's so far shaping up to be the kind of bot that we'll have a future with. Next episode, we're going to tweak the guns, we're going to add the electro plates, and then the episode after that, we're going to get into some match footage. So if you want to be notified when I add that video, subscribe to my channel or follow me on social media. Links for social media always in the information section below the video. Leave your comments and feedback. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.